Well, I think it's about time I get 2021 started off right by releasing a fantastic and highly requested tutorial. This is going to be how I make my floor dragging tails. I've always gotten wonderful compliments on these because people absolutely love how swooshy and movement filled they are, but they're still soft enough to be able to be picked up and held close to you, which makes them perfect for snuggling. They're also very durable. So let's go ahead and make one. The first thing you're going to need is to start off with your pattern. The character I'm making here has a fairly complex pattern, so I would recommend starting with something a little bit more simplistic if you're a beginner. Something important to keep in mind is that if you're doing a good floor dragging tail, it should have a slight sweeping shape to it, but it should be about as long as your legs are. I'm making this one a little bit longer for the client. Once you have the pattern all drawn out the way you like it, go ahead and cut out each of the individual colors. This is definitely one of the more time consuming parts of making fursuit stuff, but it's well worth it in the end when you see that beautiful end result. And here I have all of my colors, which were purchased from howlfabrics.com. I highly recommend their website. It is fantastic and they always have a wonderful array of colors. I'm going to be starting with the black here by just laying down my pieces, making sure that the fibers are pointing towards me so that I know to trace the pieces correctly. Always check your fur direction. It should point towards your extremities. That's the best way I can describe it. On the head, it'll point back. On the arms, it'll point towards your fingers on the legs towards your toes, and the tail will point away from the body, etc. Doing this will really help improve the quality of your product. I'm also using a much shorter fibered fur here because I personally like shorter suits. I don't know why, I think it's because the details look a little bit more crispy and clean, but I find that long shaggy fur is also a pain in the butt to maintain, whereas this wonderful teddy fur from Howl Fabric is already about one inch pile, which is perfect for what I have in mind. It's beautiful and it's got this fantastic lustrous sheen on it. Look at how pretty shiny that is. I absolutely love this fur. You also really want to make sure when you're working with white like this, that you don't use anything except black Sharpie, silver Sharpie, or Taylor's chalk. Never use colored sharpies on any sort of light colored fur because the color will bleed and unfortunately it will stain and ruin your fur and potentially other people's if you tend to sweat a lot and decide to give them a big ol' hug and you're covered in sharpie marks. I've had to learn this the hard way with white fur and take it from me, it, it is a pain in the butt to fix. Just stick with Taylor's chalk, silver, or black. Make sure you are tracing both the left and right side and that you're marking them in some way or another that you can tell them apart from each other. Now with this longer fur here, this is this beautiful pewter. I absolutely love the color, but the piece that I needed was so long that I had to split it in half. To make your seam lines less obvious on parts like these, instead of cutting the fabric directly on a straight line, try cutting it on a diagonal. I also needed to shave this fur because it was a little bit too long for my project and I didn't want one weird long fur and then the rest being short. However, you'll notice as I'm shaving this, there's this weird, almost stripey zigzag kind of pattern that appears. It looks cool, and I think it would work really well for certain suits, but it's definitely not what I'm going for for this particular suit. So I end up having to come in and fix this, and I'm going to show you all how I fixed it as well, so that if you ever encounter this problem, or if you encounter seams or, you know, weird kind of creases all over your fur, you can fix it, so don't panic. I'm simply taking my iron on a very low heat setting, and I'm just repeatedly passing it over top of the fur. Brush it out every so often, and then press and iron. I continuously repeat this process over the entire patch that I'm going for, 
If it gets a little stubborn in some spots, I'll sprinkle a little bit of water on it because I find using that little bit of water with the heat does help to smooth out the fibers. And as long as you're careful, it shouldn't melt them. But you have to be very, very careful that you're not using too much heat, otherwise these fake fibers will melt. And now that it's all nice and flat and shaved, I can go ahead and cut out these extra pieces. Now you'll notice that I do have a lot of seam allowance on these, and that's for a couple reasons. It makes it so that when I shave down everything and I cut it, it's all one uniform length and I don't have to come in and trim any stubborn edges. Everything's all ready to go. The first scraps that I get from this process I usually keep and I use it as stuffing. Now once all these pieces have been cut, trimmed, and pinned, we can go ahead and line everything up. Every so often my seam allowance may be a little bit too much, so I have to come in and make a manual adjustment, but other than that, not too bad. And then it's just a process of pin and sew and pin and sew, because this is going to take quite a while to get all these pieces stitched together. These long pieces were a little bit stubborn because the fiber is so silky soft that it tried to shift around a lot in my machine. And on this one, I started sewing it and then noticed my clips were feeling a little bit looser than they should have. I pulled it out of the machine to figure out what was going on after I'd finished my little stitch line here, only to discover what everybody who uses a sewing machine hates. Yep, there it is. The bobbin ran out of thread halfway down the seam, and now I have to repin and do it all again. With that out of the way, I went ahead, refilled my bobbin, and sewed everything together. Now that I have all these pieces set, I can go ahead and separate them into the left and right sides and get ready to pin all the pieces together. Also, to help things lie flat, I like to trim the very edges of my stitches here. I just find that it helps when sewing everything together so that there's not a big crease or a big bulge right there at the edge. Definitely make sure that with long pieces like these, you have your darts lined up. They're hard to see on camera, but I have itty bitty little markings on these that allow me to see where each piece is supposed to connect. This ensures that it won't be warped or distorted by the time I'm done. And I give it a good brushing when it's pinned just to make sure there's no fur fibers trapped in between. Diagonal pieces like these are definitely a little bit more tricky, but they're still doable. All in all, I believe this tail took me roughly five days to finish. So it was definitely an involved and long process. Part of that mostly just because recording does add a lot to the production time, having to constantly get up and adjust the camera and whatnot. So I really want to produce tutorials faster, but doing so is incredibly difficult. <laughs> Whenever you're using a sewing machine, you'll notice that when I first start and end a stitch, I go backwards after I've started it. Backstitching your starting area is very, very important because it will keep your seams from coming undone. I learned this the hard way when I made Windsor 1.0, and a lot of my seams came undone because I didn't backstitch them. I didn't see the necessity of it because I figured, you know, it holds fine as is. Oh no. It doesn't hold fine as is. It will cause problems. Please make sure you backstitch before you continue with your line and backstitch when you end one. 
Now with both the left and right sides done, the whole product is starting to come together. I just have to line everything up and then pin the two halves. This is very important that you make sure everything lines up and all the little fur fibers are poked inside the material because at this point you will definitely see your seams if you're not careful. A lot of my first starter tails suffered from very obvious seam lines and weird distortings were halfway down a long tail like this. The pattern would sort of shift and it would result in it looking sideways. I think it's because the fabric kind of moves around as you're attempting to sew it, but there's not much I really know how to fix. You just have to make sure everything lines up, use scissors to cut off any excess seam allowance that may be hanging around, and please check your darts to make sure everything lines up properly. I ended up having to come back after I'd stitched half of this tail and redo it because I didn't do that and I missed two of my darts and it caused a big old warp in the end of the tail, but you live and learn. Once everything's all pinned, you can go ahead and begin sewing the left and right sides of the tail together. It's important to work slowly as you're doing this and just barely stick to your seam allowance. Even though I've sped up this footage, it still took a long time to get both halves sewn together. And if you're new to using a sewing machine, uh, please use like a guider or something to be able to scooch your fabric in there. Don't put your fingers that close, please. <laughs> Uh, I've been doing this for a very long time, so I kind of know where the safe spot is to sew, to where I don't puncture my own finger, but it does happen, so be strong, hang in there. Once the left and right side is fully done, you can start turning it inside out. Now, at the very end here, as I'm turning it in, I stuff about one cup worth of polyfill beads in the very tip of the tail, and then the rest gets stuffed fairly loosely with polyfill. Now the main reason why I stuff like this is one, it's easier, and two, it allows me to ensure the thickness and the firmness of which I stuff my tails as I'm working. If you turn the entire skin inside out, trying to stick your whole arm down in there and stuff it is just such a pain. If you roll it up like a sock, it works so much easier. Now the point of the polyfill beads that are in the tip of the tail is for both weight balancing, so that it drags on the ground and stays where it's supposed to, but it also gives it a very satisfying funk when you drop it on the ground. And from my personal experience, this makes it move better when you wiggle and wag it. Now at the very base of the tail here, I have two parts. I have a piece of three inch polyurethane foam that I picked up from Home Depot. And I have a piece of EVA foam, otherwise known as like a floor yoga mat. Now the purpose of these two parts, once they're hot glued together, is that they are going to stabilize and secure the base of the tail. This is why in any of my tails and costumes that I make, you'll notice they stay connected to my body the way they're supposed to and they don't sag or deform. This is the secret. This solid chunk right here that helps it to prevent it from deforming. What I'm doing right now with my scissors is I'm cutting a slit that goes all the way through half part of this foam because I'm going to stick a little pocket in there so that I can make the belt removable on this tail. Up until this point, almost all my tails, the belt has been permanent, but people complained that they couldn't snuggle it, so I found a solution. At some point, I will be making a tutorial that specifically addresses this and shows how to do it in depth. I debated on doing it for this one, but it proved to be a little too difficult for me to fit in with all this footage. And the video was already getting pretty long, so bear with me. And here is all the pieces done. Now, I didn't film all these pieces, but if you want tutorials on how to do stuff like these, I will be doing them in the future. Just trying to cut back on as much time as I possibly can in a video like this. Because I know not a lot of people have all these accents and details on things. It's mostly just, you know, a basic straight tail. And here I am just using the whip stitch to attach this cute little gore cutaway detail. Again, with that gore being cute, what a weird concept for my brain to comprehend. <laughs> this is a very tedious process and takes forever, hence why Cheeto decided to join me here and be my little snuggle buddy. But the end result is absolutely fantastic. And whenever you have your tail just sitting on display, it's always a fantastic little conversation piece of people looking at it and going, Oh wow, that's so neat and different. I love that. 
it's little things like that that really I, I really just enjoy making fursuits. It's so much fun being able to create anything your brain can imagine and to bring these wonderful pieces of wearable artwork to life. And once all that's done, I'm going to start by lining up the beautiful tail feathers on here to make sure that they're going to fit properly. And then I pin them in place. I like using these pins with these really big flower heads on them because it's impossible to lose them in my fur. Please don't leave pins in your fur, especially if you're doing them for commissions. This is seriously bad juju. Once everything's all nice and pinned, I'm using an upholstery needle, which is a fantastic little tool that looks like this. And I'm using the ladder stitch to go all the way around as close and as tightly as I possibly can to the tip of the tail. I want this connection to be extra super strong, so I'm also using upholstery thread to attach this. If you sew very carefully and move the fur out of the way as you go, it should result in the seams being almost impossible to notice, and it has a secure connection that looks fantastic and is very hard to break. And there's these little feather bits that also attach near the top of the tail for this character. These little pieces were interesting to figure out because I didn't want them to be too heavy to where they would sag down, so I used a very thick fabric stabilizer inside them. Once again, they are pinned in place so that I make sure they don't shift around too much, and then I begin using my upholstery needle and the ladder stitch once again in order just to get everything nice and secure. Because these are on a slight curve with the tail, it is important to check the fit every so often and just make sure that they're lining up properly so that this white fur doesn't end up on the top. Once I ladder stitched both pieces there, you can zoom in and see. The stitches are fairly loose at the top here because I do want the tail to be able to wiggle, whereas the ones at the base here are tight all the way to the fabric, and they are extremely strong. You can pull on this, people can step on it, and it's very unlikely that it will rip the stitches out. They're also sewn on the bottom half as well for added security. And here's what I was talking about earlier with the removable belt. The hidden little pocket in here that it slides through is neatly concealed within the fur. Here we go, here we go again. Trying hard, but you want to be my friend. Ain't no place to hide, ain't no one to run to Here we go, here we go again Call my bluff, I'ma be here till the end I'm the one you ride, I'm the one you ride to If you don't wanna change Ain't no place to hide, ain't no one to run to If you don't wanna change I can help you out, I can help you out, I can help you out. This great big tail measures a whopping 58 inches, but is still very soft, flexible, and extremely lightweight. It's also very durable. I can roll it up into a little cinnamon bun and squeeze it with all my might, and it will still pop back open into its correct shape, and it's perfectly fine so it can take all the travel squishing you could possibly need. And because of its lightweight nature, it's super easy to carry around. It weighs less than five pounds. Big tails like these are awesome and personally my favorite on suits. I absolutely love the way they drag behind the character and really help with that animalistic feel that I'm going for in my work. Plus it makes a really great little backpack accessory, don't you think? <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a lot of fun to make, and making this tail is so spectacular. I'm planning on using the character that this was made for to do an entire tutorial series on how to make a full suit, because this character is going to be a full suit that I'm working on as part of a trade. I hope you really enjoyed this video, because I certainly enjoyed making it and bringing this beautiful tail to life. I'm definitely going to be working on more tutorials in the future, including an entire fursuit tutorial from start to finish. 
We're gonna do everything from the paws to the tail, feet, wings, head, bodysuit, digigrade padding, even some accessories. The whole works. This has been a highly requested topic for me for quite a while now, particularly over on my TikTok. Which, if you want to follow me more actively, I do post daily on TikTok. So for all kinds of funny little skits and videos and informational bits, I highly recommend following me there. That's the best place where you can see the most frequent uploads for me, because it takes a lot of time to edit YouTube videos. I promise I'll get better at uploading more frequently. But there are other ways to support me as well. You can follow me on any of my social medias here, or you can even go over to my Patreon and support me on that. Patreon is a fantastic tool that really allows people to be able to support me and help me make videos like this. Without the support from my patrons, I definitely couldn't do nearly as much as I can. If you'd like to join all these wonderful people, feel free to go on over and check it out. That is patreon.com slash nefertiti. These lovely people are all my awesome bronze patrons, who I cannot thank enough for their extended support, especially during my super inactive periods when I'm trying to figure things out and get caught up. I cannot tell you guys how much I really appreciate your patience. Thank you so, so much. And I would also love to extend a fantastic thank you to all my silver patrons. Volt the Duchy, Valibite, Osmium Dragon, Draxfer, and Plasma. You guys do so much to support me each and every month, and I cannot thank you enough for all that you do for me. I also have to thank my wonderful gold patron, C Noodles! You're such a fantastic person, and the fact that you've been supporting me this much, and everything that you do between your funny TikToks and just your wholesomeness, you're such an amazing, wonderful person, and I can't wait for the day that I get to meet you in person. It's going to be awesome. And an absolutely humongous, extended, stupendous thank you to my Platinum Patrons. Zalilin, Mr. Eight Fingers, and Small Red Fox. I, I am just blown away by the fact that I even have any Platinum Patrons, and the fact that you all go so much out of your way to be able to support me and help me do stuff like this, it really puts me at a loss for words every time I get to read this patron screen and see these. Thank you so, so much for all your support. I cannot tell you how much I greatly appreciate everything that you do for me. If you would like to become one of these wonderful, amazing people, please consider checking out my Patreon. I would ever so much appreciate it. But don't feel like you have to, because I'll always still post content regardless, and keep trying my best every day to make you smile. Things are a little bit crazy, but together we're gonna get through it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I do plan on making an entire tutorial series on how to do a fursuit, because I've had significant amount of people asking me how do you do this and how do you do that, and as much as I would like to put them in parts on TikTok, one minute for each video and needing almost two hours worth of content per part, it doesn't quite work so good. <laughs> and that's where YouTube comes in fantastically handy. I have a whole list of tutorials I'm going to be planning to do, including the ones that you see here on screen. If there's anything you don't see that you would like me to do, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try my best to consider if I have the time to record that, or if I even have the knowledge to do it. I'm always willing to share what I know with you. But I want to thank you so very much for watching this video. It's going to be a fantastic new year full of lots of good changes. We got to have that positive mental attitude. That's the best thing you can do. But I do hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day and a fantastic life.